Hi, and welcome to PK's Photography Tips. This is my first educational podcast on photography. I am Patty Kaler, and I will soon be starting my 22nd year of teaching, and I am the owner of PK&J Media Photography. The purpose of my podcast is to assist in the education of my students that are in high school, as well as others that I assist. Repetition of information and having a reference is vital. I will have reviews set up so you can test your knowledge, if you wish, on Quizlet.com. The podcast will discuss various photography topics, such as the functioning of digital cameras, composition techniques, image editing, critiquing, and promoting your images. I also hope to have several shows that include my students' images and their personal critiques of their work. As you get to know your digital camera, we want you to first learn the basic settings that will assist you with exposure. The first three settings you're going to want to learn on your camera are your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter. Once you master these three settings, then we'll move on and we'll learn some more about your digital camera. Let's take a look at how aperture affects the recording of your image. Your aperture is actually an opening in your lens that allows a specific amount of light to reach your sensor in your camera. Lenses are going to be a major purchase in your equipment. Your lens actually controls your aperture settings available. The lens controls it, not the camera itself. There are two main functions of your aperture. The first is the exposure onto the image sensor, and the second is your depth of field, how much is in focus within the frame around your subject. Let's look at a chart that will give you an example of what aperture and depth of field are. In the middle of the chart, you'll see the aperture f-stop label. Aperture is commonly referred to as f-stop, and there are a bunch of circles there, and what those represent are the opening inside of the lens, and underneath of the opening is the label of the f-stop. So you'll notice that 2, 8, 2, and 1, 4 are wide open, and the f-32, 22, 16 are a smaller opening. This is the opening that is allowing the light to come in and hit the image sensor. On the depth of field chart, you'll notice the photographer is on the left, and they're showing examples of subjects in, that he is shooting. And you will see above the subjects that you have just a narrow range of field or shallow depth of field with an f2.8, and that means that the aperture is wide open. This is called shallow depth of field selective focus. And as you move from a 2.8 to a f8 to an f22, you'll see that your range of focus gets deeper and you will move more into infinity focus. If you do not have control over your aperture, for example, on a point and shoot camera, there are still settings that you can use. An f2.8 is going to be more similar to um, the macro setting. A normal setting is more like the f8. And then there's a, a setting that is um, infinity focus, and that is in the symbol of a mountain. Now I'm going to show you some examples of actual photos and video of looking at your camera and how to choose your aperture on the camera. Let's take a look at the sunflower scene that was shot at different f-stops or different apertures. All of these shots were shot on ISO 640, and I want you to notice I've labeled with the f28 or 2.8, 4.5, 8, 10, 16, and 32. I want you to notice the depth of field. Since I had this on aperture priority, the camera chose the shutter, so the exposures are similar. Let's look at the background. As you look from the F8 and scan through all of them to the F32, notice how the background with a smaller hole, the smaller opening, and F32 is a smaller opening, notice how the background gets sharper. I chose three of these f-stops for us to take a closer look at. I have the shallow depth of field with a 2.8 and increasing to uh, 8 and then to the f20. 
And what you notice the background, how very blurry, very shallow depth of field with the 2.8. And as we move along, the background is a little more in focus. This is far behind your subject. And then with the F20, you're getting more towards infinity focus and almost everything in front of and behind the subject, which is the sunflowers, is in focus. Referring to the basic exposure settings of the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed, I'm going to show you the locations of those and having how to navigate through your camera. I have I'm partial to Canon, and I have a Canon 50D here that I'm going to show you for a DSLR, and I have the Canon PowerShot A3100 as a point and shoot to be able to show you how to navigate and find the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter speed. Let's take a look at them. Let's take a look at the point and shoot for your aperture settings. Most of your point and shoots are not gonna have actual control over an aperture per se, but they will have settings on them that will be similar in thought. If I have the, the flower button and the mountain button, I have a macro setting, which is for shooting close objects, and that's gonna make selective focus happen. We have our normal range. So as we go here, we're increasing our depth of field. And then we have the infinity focus, which means everything is gonna be in focus and we have a deep depth of field. Let's take a look at the T2i for choosing your aperture. On the top of the camera, there is a dial that says, um, has several different choices. And where it says AV, that is aperture priority, meaning you are getting to choose your aperture. So you're gonna use that, or you can go to manual where you can choose the aperture and the shutter. For this purpose, we're gonna stay on AV, and then we're gonna look back at our display, and we can see the f-stop, and it is in a rectangle, and it says at f.9, and I can turn the dial that's near the shutter release button, and I am controlling my f-stop on my camera. If I push the button halfway down, then we see that the camera will choose what it thinks is the correct shutter speed for your shot. This is for choosing the aperture on the 50D, the 7D, and the more advanced DSLRs. Again, simple function. You just turn to the aperture priority or the manual on the dial and just turn the dial here on the top. Your display is on the top now and you're flipping through and you are choosing your aperture yourself. That easy. As I said, your lens choice is going to affect how much you can open your aperture, which will then affect how much you can open up for exposure and for shallow depth of field. Let's look at this Canon lens. It's a 28 to 135 millimeter. When you look at the front of the lens, or when you're purchasing a lens too, it will tell you a ratio, and that ratio here is a 1 to 3.5 to 5.6. For this particular lens then, at a 28 millimeter wide open, it will only open up to a 3.5 aperture. When you zoom into 135, it will only open up to a 5.6 aperture. So purchasing, for example, a 2.8 lens, it's called a faster lens because you can shoot faster and you can open up more for more light for exposure and so you can get more shallow depth of field. Lens choice is very important. That's all we have for this segment. And again, I hope you find these podcasts informational. Remember, you can test your knowledge at quizlet.com. My username is pkaler. Feel free to send me suggestions or ask any questions. The best way to reach me is by email at pknjmedia at gmail.com or pkaler at chathamschools.org. Thanks so much for your time. Now go make some beautiful images. <laughs>